Whenever you're ready, Liz, we can start because I just started the recording. I see we, we are a good number now we can begin. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We, welcome to this uh, peer discussion session that you're beginning today. And I'm so excited to see you all here. This is going to be a great team where we are here focusing on palliative care in children. So my name is Elizabeth Kabuthi. I am a medical social worker and a certified child life specialist. I work in the, seven, in the second largest referral hospital in, the, in my country, Kenya, the Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital. I work in the pediatrics oncology unit for the past 10 years, and I have great passion for children's palliative care. So I'm really excited to be here to learn from each of you, to learn from Erin, our mentor, and I'm looking forward to an exciting session. So please welcome, and Erin, take us forward. Thank you. So uh, today we thought we could just introduce ourselves um, and we'll take maybe the next 10 minutes or so just to hear from, from you. So if you have enough data and your internet connection is good enough, you feel able to put your video on, we're going to play a bit of a game. So I'm going to start, I'll introduce myself, and then I'm going to call on someone else uh, related to their Zoom name. So uh, if you've changed your name, perfect. If your name is um, something about your iPhone or your uh, the type of photo you have, then, then that's how you'll get called. So tell us your name, where you're working, and then uh, what you're interested in about this course. Um, and yeah, hopefully it'll be hopefully it'll be fun. So my name is Erin. I'm a palliative care nurse originally from Canada, uh, but I have lived in Kenya now for almost four years, supporting different palliative care projects. Uh, and I'm pretty excited. We had a great ECHO program uh, earlier this year, and uh, just excited about new opportunities for uh, people who are working in the field to learn and to gain more skills. So yeah, I may not join the call every week, uh, if you guys are thinking of having a discussion every week, uh, but I'm happy to use my Zoom account so you guys can meet and talk about uh, different things that you're learning. So I'm going to pass it on to uh, Noor. Noor, can you introduce yourself? And then you pass it on to somebody else. Hello, everyone. Yeah, my name is Noor Maliko. Um, professional translator um, as a um, freelancer from 2020. Currently also I'm working as a freelancer, also I'm a professional as a translator since 2000, 2017, no, 2016 up to now. I'm a translator as a for police station. Also I'm interested in this thing as future, you know, uh, I like children, so I like them to support when I get these uh, chances to, the, to support the chance, the cause of the children. I am very interested of it as, as I like children. Thank you. Okay, choose, Nora, you choose someone else. Can you see on Zoom? Can you see anybody else? Oh, just unmute so we can hear you. Huh? Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, voice of bliss. Yes, I'm called Ramadan Abdi Umar. Ramadan Abdi Umar from Agadera Camp. Uh, I initially work uh, as a CHW uh, from uh, Agadera refugee come during uh, COVID-19, but currently I'm working community basically in uh, So I am highly interested, okay, that this uh, palliative care, because we have planned from May to uh, Ju July, 26th July, we have to the introduction of the palliative care, and uh, we gain okay, there our satisfaction. I highly appreciate also uh, Madam Erin, 
welcome and never give up to continue the hard work that you are doing. So we need the children, we are very happy, okay, to take care of the children and also the entire community of the people these days, the entire of the survival illness. So we need to support the children and then by the Marine, I urge to continue this program since you are live and to get a lot of knowledge from you and appreciate, welcome again this program. Thank you. Nice. Esther, do you want to go next? Esther Daranga. Good afternoon. My okay, name Mohammed, is yeah. Hi, Mohammed. Karibu. Welcome. Good, good afternoon. My name is Mohammed Jalem Alim. I'm working with the IRC uh, lab assistants uh, from 2016 to now. And welcome, Madam and Erin Diaz and for supporting us with the certificate and knowledge and also welcome a new madam who has handled um, a palliative care for the child. Thanks in all. Welcome, I'm appreciated you. Bye. Thank you, thanks Mohammed. Uh, Esther, do you wanna go next? You just unmute, Esther. We can't hear you. Okay. Thank you very Thanks. much, Ernest. Thank you so much. Welcome to the platform. I'm happy to be in this group, and I'm a palliative care nurse in Kenya, Kitale Hospital. Welcome. Nice. John, do you want to go next? John Mawogole. Mawogole. Thank you very much. I'm John Maogure from Uganda. Happy to meet, to meet Esther Jarenga. She's my classmate in the Institute of Hospice and Palliative Care in Africa, affiliated to Makare. I'm the guild president currently uh, studying Bachelor in Palliative Care Medicine uh, at that institute. Um, interested to learn more about children part of care, especially in the humanitarian uh, situations. Thank you very much. Hope to go on well in these sessions. Thank you. Thanks, John, so much. Um, Mohammed Harid Ahmed. Do you want to go next? You can unmute or turn your video on so we can see you. Uh, or Ali, Alipto Kumar Mondol. You want to go next? Uh, Abdi or Hassan. We have a few Abdis. And you're free to uh, also put your information in the chat. Um, Aiden McKaylin, Mac. Again, uh, since you are waiting, there's again, uh, since you are waiting for okay, others to join us, uh, yeah. I just decided yeah, to ask one question because when yeah. we are dealing in the, the introduction of the palliative care, the, the, the previous amounts we have passed. So, the, basically, we were attending the glass uh, Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. Hi, Abdi. Abdi, Rahim, unmute, unmute, please. Uh, if there's a lot of background noise, just put in the chat, uh, and we can introduce you from the chat. So I have Ifra here uh, working with in the Dadaab refugee camp in Kenya. 
Uh, Rita also introduced herself. She's from Uganda. She's working in a refugee settlement in Uganda, which is great. And Rita and Elizabeth are going to be the, the leaders of the program, uh, which is great. They seem ex really excited to lead the group and uh, be there to answer uh, questions. We also have Rowan Abdi Omar, who's also working in Dadaab in Kenya. Um, Noor already introduced himself. He's working in Dadaab. So if you if you have a minute and are able to, to put in the chat, uh, it's really great to get to know you. It seems like we have a really wide variety of uh, colleagues with us today. We have nurses, off clinical officers. We have um, people that are working as community health workers, a translator, someone as a lab technician. This is really great. And it's, it's exciting to see us working in multidisciplinary uh, groups. So thank you so much for coming today. Today is just our initial uh, call for us to uh, understand what the ICCCN course is. So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you how to log into the course and where the course is on the website. And then we're gonna spend the second part of the program today um, just answering any questions anyone has about the course or um, if there's something that you learned in the course and you wanted to share with the group. So uh, it probably won't take us an hour, but it's really nice to just be able to connect uh, with everyone online. Um, and again, if your network isn't so great, then you can just use the chat. Uh, I see a few more people introducing themselves on the chat. Um, Dr. Mahat uh, Hoden is working with IRC in Dadaab. Um, Dr. Mahat is in Kenya. Um, we have another uh, Hussein uh, working in Hagadera and Dadaab with IRC. And then Mohammed um, working Hello, for IRC. Hello, everyone. A technician. Karibu, welcome. Hello. Thanks for, thanks for joining in with us today. So I'm going to move on to uh, share my screen just to show you guys all how to Hello register everyone. for the I'm course. Mohamed Harit Ahmad from the Dark Refugee Club. Great. Hi, thanks for Madam Irin. Yeah. Uh, hi, Madam Irin and everyone here. And uh, I'm Adan Abdi Ibrahim, um, the current um, and that, uh I'm from the DAP Refugee Complex, particularly in Hagadera. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm a so, um, social worker, and uh, is, I'm so excited with this program uh, since I was about the other program, which was uh, running uh, in 11 weeks, that was the introduction of palliative care. And uh, I'm so really eager, and, uh, and it's my great privilege and honor again to join this uh, uh, course, which is uh, all about uh, generalist palliative care, pediatric palliative care. We really appreciate Dr. Uh, Erin Das for your report and the support with us in this journey. We really appreciate and uh, well, I can say that your position in this time in our journey is, is, uh, is just unreplaceable and uh, we thank you so much and I'm looking forward to benefiting this one as we are, uh, as we are moving forward. Thank you so much. Mm. Really nice to meet you, Adan. Thanks for taking the time. Um, Mohammed Abdullahi, if you want to introduce yourself, and then I'll go on to sharing my screen. So we can have one more introduction, and then we'll move to the next part. Mohammed, I saw your hand. Karibu. Yeah. Hey, Mohammed. Yes. Um, Mohammed Abdullahi. Hello, everyone. I'm Mohammed Abdullahi from the DAP, the main DAP. Great, Great to, to have be you with team. us. Okay, I'm happy to be with this team. Hi to everyone. Perfect. Thanks again. So Thank I you. will, um, uh, I'll share my screen now, but you guys can continue to introduce yourselves on, um, on, the, on the chat and we'll make sure that everyone gets a chance to uh, say hello. Okay, so the uh, course that we were trying to offer uh, for, for us as a group to work through right now is, uh, is sponsored by an organization called the International Children's Palliative Care Network. Uh, so it's called ICPCN, and it's a global network for any person that's interested in children's palliative care around the world. So it doesn't matter if you are 
uh, in Kenya or Uganda, or if you're in South Africa uh, or the UK, uh, this is a network that's for all, all people that are interested in uh, palliative care. So they offer an e-learning site. So I wanna show you how to get to the e-learning site and they offer a variety of courses for free uh, that you need to do on your own. Um, they're called self-guided courses. So they're a bit different than the ECHO program we offered earlier in the year, uh, but they're a really good resource um, uh, for us to use. So this is the website you can see here. Uh, the website that we've typed in is IC pcn.org, uh, and that's in the website there. And then you, the next thing you need to do is you come to training. Can you see training right here? It's in there, um, uh, all the different details about their website. And if you go down to one, two, three, the fourth one, it shows ICPCN e-learning program. Uh, that's what you wanna click on. So you click on ICPCN e-learning program. And then you get to this site. So the website you can see at the very top here is different. It says icpcn.org slash icpcns dash e-learning dash program slash. So it's a different website. And here it is, it explains the different programs uh, that they offer. So here it says they recognize the need to make training more accessible and affordable to all who need training. Uh, and therefore they've developed several short courses uh, to provide the e-learning program for, uh, for healthcare workers. So there's a variety of courses. Here they uh, have listed the courses that are available. So there's 10 courses. So here you can see the following courses are currently available an introduction, to children's palliative care, pain assessment, childhood development and play, communication, end of life, grief and bereavement, neonatal palliative care, symptoms other than pain, uh, adopting children's palliative care during COVID. And the last one in the most, the newest course that they've introduced is number 10, children's palliative care in humanitarian settings. So this is the course that we originally thought it would be great to have a peer group uh, supporting one another to go through this specific course. Because ICPCN supports uh, healthcare workers that are providing palliative care in any setting around the world, not just humanitarian settings, they offer a variety of courses, but this is the one that we were specifically thinking of doing together. Um, you have the ability, once you join ICPCN and you have a, a login uh, details, you can do any of these courses. Uh, you don't have to just do the one that we're going to do together, but you can do them all. You just need some time. Um, what do you need to do the course? You need a computer and you need to have internet access. Uh, so you do the course on the internet. Um, and oftentimes we, we recommend that you try, to, um, you try to apply the information that you are learning in your clinical site or the clinical situation where you uh, are working. It doesn't cost anything, it's completely free. And this is the, uh, how it works uh, that we've shared on our WhatsApp group several times already in the last several days. So again, you want to log in to your ICPCN site. You click on the, the menu and that's where you'll be taken to the e-learning. Uh, you need to provide some personal details. I think it's your name, your email address. Um, you wanna choose the course that you're gonna do and then you begin working on the course. The course you can stop at any stage and you can come back to. So say you have half an hour during a break and you'd like to work on your course uh, because you have internet at your workplace, you can do that and then you can, you can stop it. So you don't have to complete the whole course uh, in one sitting. You do need to do the assessments that are done throughout the course and one uh, at the end of the course. Um, and then if you have successfully completed the final assessment of the course, you can download a certificate um, that uh, comes from ICPCN. So what we're gonna do now is I can show you how to log in and then we're gonna take some questions from the group and Elizabeth uh, will walk us through some of those questions. Um, so I want to uh, log in to the e-learning ICPCN site. So I clicked on that. 
So currently, okay. this is the site that you could actually save, or you can see here I have started. This is a site that's going to become a bookmark for my thing because I'm going to come back to it pretty regularly. So here you can see that you're not logged in or log in. So you have two different options here. Every time you come to this site, you're going to want to log in. There, there's a dashboard. It shows my courses and then all the courses that are that available. Are available. ICPCN offers courses in many different languages. Um, and uh, I think for our setting currently in East Africa, English will be the most relevant language. But if you do have colleagues that speak other languages and they're shown here, then you can also uh, do that. I believe our humanitarian course currently is only English. Uh, so once we do that, I'm going to click on courses in English. And then it will show you all the different courses that are available um, from ICPCN. So here it shows courses in English. These are the courses that we have access to. And the first one is the one that they did originally. That's the introduction, the pain assessment, communicating with children, children's development, grief and bereavement, end of life care, neonatal palliative care, symptoms other than pain, um, adopting palliative care during the pandemic. And at the very bottom of the, of the website is the children's palliative care in humanitarian settings. So this is the course that introduces uh, children's palliative care in humanitarian settings. It outlines core principles, as well as uh, talks about communication and multi multidisciplinary work um, through the disease trajectory of children, including uh, at the end of their life. And this course is done jointly through ICPCN and Palchase, which is the global network supporting humanitarian um, situations and, and colleagues that are working in those settings related to palliative care. So I'm going to click on this here, Children's Palliative Care in Humanitarian Settings. And once I click on it, it actually shows me that I haven't logged in yet. So I've clicked on my course, but I haven't logged in. So I need to then put my username, which often tends to be an email address, and then I need to put my password in. This is what you're going to need to do every time you log into the course. So this is a good uh, website also to index or to bookmark ICPC eLearning ICPCN uh, login. So I'm going to put that in the chat right now. Um, so that uh, so that everyone can see it. Okay, so if it's your first time, so today there might be people that this is the first time they've seen this website and the first time they've heard about this course. We actually need to create a new account. So if it's the first time you've been here for full access to all the courses, it just takes a minute to create a new account uh, at the website. So you need to fill out a new account form and then you'll be emailed uh, directly. You can read your email and then click on the link and then it will allow you to uh, access the full course. If you have any issues, then you can contact admin at elearningicpcn.org. So I'm gonna create a new account uh, today so you guys can see. My username is going to be Aaron Das, and then I'll put in that password. Uh, my email address, I'm going to use erin.das at ucalgary.ca. This is my university email address in Canada. So I put in my email address again. And then I can add my first name. My first name is Aaron. My surname is Das. And I'm currently in Nairobi. And my country is Kenya. I'm currently living and working. I can put in here what kind of type of organization I am. I am currently a professional nurse. Uh, my place of work, I can put KEPCA, because that's the Kenya Hospices and Palliative Care organization. We are other, we're an association. And who do we care for? So I'll put adults and pediatric, because we do a variety, uh, support a variety of projects with KEPCA. So you do then need to do a policy agreement and then you click here uh, if you understand and agree. And now I'm going to click on this, create new account. 
Okay, so here uh, uh, it says my uh, username can only be in lowercase. So I'll need to change that. So I'll try Aaron dot dot. Um, Okay, let me try that, Aaron dot dot. So you can only use lowercase for, uh, per perfect. Okay, so now that went through. My It says now um, that an email should be sent to my address uh, and it will contain easy instructions for me to complete my uh, registration. So I will go to my email uh, and it shows up here. On the on the email, it says it's confirming a new uh, account, and I need to go to a new login. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste it, and we'll go back here. And this is my new login. So now it says here, thanks, Aaron Das, your registration has been confirmed, and I'll click continue. And now because I chose my course uh, as the children's palliative care and humanitarian settings, it's now taken me to my course. So now I can enroll, self-enroll. I wanna enroll in this course. And now it says I've enrolled in the course. And now on the left-hand side, you'll see a general and a welcome. There's one module, which uh, is what is children's palliative care. There's several different sections, there's a reflection exercise, um, and then a certificate that you can get once you've finished. And then there's a second module. So there's two modules in this course. Uh, module three and module four are still coming um, and um, they're not uploaded just as of yet. So this is the way the course looks. So you can see here, you can click through, it shows uh, different lessons and here's the module. So you would click on each module individually. And then you'll slowly go through the course. So you can uh, scroll down. Um, here it has different sections where you define uh, children's palliative care, section two, section three, section four. Once you read through all the sections, your assignment will come up and then you'll have a quiz. Um, you can't do the assignment and the quiz until you've read through the different sections. Uh, and then you'll receive a certificate for that module. And then there's some references there. So this is what uh, this is what the course looks like. Um, uh, now, what we'll probably do is I'm going to pass it over to Elizabeth. And um, and Elizabeth, we can field any questions uh, or any comments from the group um, regarding that. Are you there, Elizabeth? Did you wanna? Uh, hello, Erin. Hello. Hello, I'm been with my internet issues yesterday. Personally, I also logged into something totally different. And so I am thankful that you are able to teach us how to go through I'm saying Mohammed has his opportunity to share what he has to tell us. Mohammed, Mohammed Abdullah, your hand is raised and you're muted. Hello, hear me? Hello. Hello, that was just to salute you. Hello? Okay, Hello, that so, was just to salute oh, thank you, you Mohammed. <laughs> thank you for the salute. Okay. So this session we are going to take up any questions 
maybe you have a challenge, maybe you have you need a clarification, and maybe some of us have already gone through module one, which is uh, introduction to children's palliative care land and because we have Erin who is our mentor here she can actually answer the questions that you may be having so the floor is open but i will encourage all participants to keep yourself muted unless you're talking for order thank you anyone is welcome uh so john uh, mohammed you your hand is still raised so i don't know what Uh, John just had a question about how long is the course? Um, so the course is self-guided. So I, I believe um, it, it should take between two to four hours to do the course. So it's not a very long course. These are short courses. Um, but if you spend half an hour on the course over, you know, maybe the, the course of two weeks, um, it shouldn't take so long. Yeah, you do need to read through the content uh, and you'll need to answer the quizzes. Um, and uh, I believe there's some reflective exercises, uh, but but yeah, it yeah. shouldn't take so long. If you were interested in doing other courses with ICPCN of the 10 courses that we shared on their website, uh, of course, if you did all 10, I would say that would probably take a while, but that that's possibly a goal for the next six months or the next one year uh, to do in your free time. Um, and requirements for the certificate is to completely read through the whole course and then finish any assessments that that's required for the course. So you need to make sure it, you will not, it, it, the certificates are not provided by a person, it's through the electronic e-learning site. So if you don't complete something, you can't get it. So you have to complete it and you have to log into your account every single time. You can't, unfortunately, you can't do this course as a group. You could support one another, but you each, to get a certificate, you each would need to do the course and log in separately. It's a little bit different than our ECHO program that we did before. And the certificates are provided, I believe, by PDF, where you could download them and print them yourself. Yeah, hello, Irene. Yeah, hi, Noor. I would like to know if this course have an expired date. Uh, from when you start the course, you mean? Like, how quickly do you need to finish it? I think there's, I don't know of anything related to that. Uh, I believe if you log in and you take a break, then it will still be there waiting for you. I don't think it will expire. Oh, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Madam Erin, uh, for the explanation and uh, just to understand the the best and how to grade the the account. I just wanted to add a small thing that I, I myself have uh, come across as Adam. Uh, I just want to share my friends that uh, my colleague is here. If someone now is, is interested to log in and uh, if it's the first time to create a new account, to explain it well, but there is uh, some challenge if I myself have faced it and, and just want to uh, highlight my friends. And that one is if you just create an new account and maybe you forgot about uh, the username and the plus the plus the password you created so in this case i it happened to me i i, I created a new account then uh, after some time i back to the course i just wanted to continue uh, just reading it but actually it asks every time uh, to log in we just put your password plus the username but i forgot it I try to create a new account within the same and uh, the same bus, uh, the same email that I used to create the the, the, the previous one, but it's automatically refused. It says that this email 
has created another account before, so it wouldn't accept it. So in this case, I just want to uh, to to tell my friends when they are creating the, the the account, just to be careful and remember the the password plus the plus the username for you to access it every time that you need to to log in and uh, just continue the reading. So that's my advice, and I have seen it. But the, my goodness was I had that uh, two email, and I was able to create. My, that new account with another email that I had. So that's one that I, that's what uh, I wanted to say. Thank you. Yeah, that's a really good reminder, Hadan, to make sure you write down your username and your password, because when you're creating a new account, uh, you'll need to use those two details to log in every time. So maybe just on a separate piece of paper or in a separate email, you can email yourself uh, what your username and password is. Because you can only have, you're right, Aiden, you can only have one account per email address. So if you forget it, then it's uh, a bit difficult. Yeah, John, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, thank you very much for this guidance. Um, just on the same as on the not the previous speakers just noted down to still avoid that there is where you reach and it will ask you to save to save password so it is good to, to, to click on that when you click on save password every time you log in you may not need to, to remember the password to just take you direct there yeah so to avoid the other error of uh, creating again the account, you just reach the stage where to ask you save password, click save, and you'll be safe. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, John, for that insight. So I'm seeing um, a number of people asking about the duration of the course. This is just to clarify that this is a self-directed course this means that it depends on your pace. If you want to finish it in the shortest time possible, you can. And if you want to take a long time, it is also possible. So it is your own pace. So yeah, duration depends on you as an individual. Thank you. And there's just one question, uh, Elizabeth, there about if this course is different than the Zoom meeting that happened yesterday. I think John was sharing a few links about a Zoom meeting that happened yesterday, and it is different. So um, the, the Zoom echo calls that are currently happening, uh, they happen all over the world. There's several different echo courses that happen. They're currently the one that John shared is a pediatric course for palliative care. So it's the same topics that this self-guided course is, but it's not the same. So our WhatsApp group is, is mostly focused on the ICPCN course. There may be different opportunities that come up that we might share on the group, but um, John agreed that he won't uh, share to the same extent. If you want to reach out to John directly, then you can. Uh, he obviously has a lot of resources, which is great, um, but the course is different. The, the Zoom echo calls are live classes that you have to log into, and then you get to receive a certificate based on your attendance um, at a live class. The ICPCN courses, you get a certificate only if you complete all of the modules online. So the way of training is a bit different. Um, the ICPCN course is a self-guided course. So if you've ever taken an e-learning course before uh, for some training for your workplace, um, you it's not, it, people can do it at all different time, times. It doesn't matter the specific day or time. Um, we were hoping to have a peer group that meets, uh, depending on how, how often you all want to meet, where we would come together and talk about the course. Uh, but we wouldn't necessarily go through the course together. Um, so that's the biggest difference. We were thinking of having discussions about different patients that we had uh, that Rita and Elizabeth will help coordinate, 
Um, maybe they can happen regularly. Maybe it's once a month. I'm not sure how often you guys want to meet, um, but but that's the biggest difference in the ECHO course and the ICPCN course. Thank you, Irene. John, John, you have your hand raised. Please speak up. Yes, thank you very much, um, Iris, for that clarification. Actually, the, what I shared was different. It is an echo program. And for those who may be interested, still you can catch up with it. But I believe for this purpose, I need we need to concentrate so that because uh, I see this self-paced course we will need more time. You need great time for it, at least some minutes or hours per day, so that you can move at a good speed. And I would also suggest that, uh, like you had noted, that a peer group discussion can also be a good one. I also agree with that. If we can agree, like maybe either it can be every after two weeks or every month, we can have just a case presentation, like a case conference we discuss and we learn more about that case together. Then if we may not have, we may not be going at the same pace, but the case presentation, if someone presenting it gives all the details, still all of us can be able to learn from that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, John, for that insight. Um, so I think we will we will discuss further and see how best we can go about this uh, PPC training. Um, as we've said, it is self-guided. Self so yeah, the issue of case presentation really is very important because we can learn a lot from case presentations. So as uh, you are allowed to share on the WhatsApp platform and let us discuss further and see what is the best way forward for us to forge ahead with the, with the learning. Thank you. Any other concerns? Maybe we can just get people to put in the chat if you're able to. We'll probably end this discussion soon, like Elizabeth was saying. But if uh, if you want to put in the chat, uh, if you're interested to meet again to have this discussion, would you want to meet every week or every other week or what once a month, twice a month? If you just put in the chat so we can get a bit of an idea, then we, uh, Rita and Elizabeth and I, can schedule um, some discussion time. Okay, thank you, Erin. We can also, Elizabeth, uh, ask on the WhatsApp group, just when people, maybe every, maybe twice a month or once a month, then okay. it gives people time to actually finish the, the uh, maybe one of the modules or something. Okay. Liz, uh, I had a suggestion. Uh-huh. Yeah, like uh, it would be a bit, uh, not organize like to everyone to give a comment. We will not have well analyzed the data, but mm -hmm. if we could have like uh, a Google form, mm -hmm. people can just log in and it, it and it can be able to collect information and it is well organized. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, John. I can I can create it then. Mm -hmm. um, I'll request Erin's email. <coughs> that that the whoever will be filling in the information mm -hmm. can be going direct to Erin does, and she will be able to see how people are responding using that. Okay. Okay. 
Erin? Yeah, we could do that. Um, uh, yeah, you can use my email address. I think the thing is probably there'll be some months, like if we meet, sometimes people can join. I mean, it's all self-directed, right? So sometimes you may have a family event comes up and you're not able to join, that's fine. Um, we all work in different places, but it's obviously we have the ability to connect virtually and support one another. So I think uh, even if we kind of plan, you know, maybe we can have the goal that most participants in this group of, of peers try to finish the course by the end of this year. And we can meet a few times between now and the end of the year and just support one another through that. I think that's a fairly achievable goal because the course is not a full-time course. It's, it's very casual, um, but then it still gives us a, a goal to reach by the end of this year if we complete it. Okay. Thank you for that suggestion, Erin. Okay. So, anyone else with some sharing to do? Hello, everyone. Hello, Mohammed. Go on. If I try to respond or to showcase my opinion towards the question raised by our honorable madam erin that is mm -hmm. how often do you want to do you want the group to meet mm -hmm. if i try to say something about it mm -hmm. i could suggest yeah once a month okay okay your response has been noted mohammed thank you Most welcome, Madam. I think through having these kinds of meets where we just get together and discuss situations, I feel like there may be times in your work where you might feel isolated. You might feel like the only person that's having to support a family through a really difficult time when their child is very sick. And I think through meeting like this, um, we can support one another through really challenging situations and give medical support, nursing support, um, but also peer-to-peer -peer support, just so people feel like they're not uh, working completely in isolation. So I think that that would be great. I think meeting once a month is also perfect. It gives people time to learn some information about pediatric palliative care or children's palliative care, and then also be prepared to come together and, and discuss some interesting cases. I know Elizabeth has a lot of interesting cases in the work that she does, and I'm sure Rita does as well. So yeah, it should be great. I'm really impressed yeah. you guys are, are putting so much effort and work to, to, to get more information. I think it's really, it's really amazing to see you guys working so hard. Thank you, Irene. So I also wanted to inquire about which day of the week should we continue with Saturdays one uh, once a month, which Saturday? Is it the first Saturday, second, third, or fourth? And is this time 2 p.m. convenient for all of us? Maybe those are some of the logistics we need to, to work on. Yes, my name is Mohammed. I'm a child as one. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so I don't know, should we still go on with a Saturday or is a weekday better? I think those are some of the issues we need to, to discuss. So if um, time is not on our side, Irene, maybe we can continue this conversation in the WhatsApp platform. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so this is the second Saturday of the month. So if we did the meeting again in one month's time from now, that would be October the 8th. Uh -huh. And we could do it at the same time, unless people, you know, share that it's really not a convenient time for them. Um, yeah. But we can we can plan for two o'clock on October, eight. October 8th. And, okay. uh, and if anyone has any issues towards that, then, you know, just reach out. But that gives people enough time. They should be able to complete several of the sections. Of the course. Okay. 
Uh, hi, hi, Dr. Maha. Do you want to go ahead? Yes, hi. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Hello, Dr. Maha. Good go afternoon, on. everyone. Yeah, to my suggestion, uh, we can make it every Saturday. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So we have our tent team. Okay. Go on. Is it Shafi? Hello. Or Noor? I think Noor maybe. No, yeah. 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 I'm a Noor. Hi. So I, I myself, yeah, I could suggest on Saturday time. 2 p.m. Hello. It could match. It could. It could make more better on Saturday. Okay. Time twelve. No, uh, time it could be two two. Mm -hmm. Much better. Okay. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Yeah, Abdi. Abdi Wali. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Hi to everyone. Uh, I would like to ask that the, the base of the bottom will say if the learning course is long, will the short will the learning be short or longer? Otherwise, thanks to everyone. Yeah, I think the best thing is try to register and get on the website yourself and see how you manage. I mean, everyone's ability with technology is a uh, bit yeah. different and everyone's access to the internet is also different. So I think it's not a long course. You saw from when I was sharing, I think there's four to five sections per module and then there's an assessment or quiz at the end. So it shouldn't take you a long time. I'm thinking it's between two to four hours. Uh, but again, if you're having technical issues or issues with your internet, it may take longer. So it's hard to tell, but um, but I would really suggest over the next few days or weeks to try to log in and see how you can manage. Thanks, Irene. I think Esther's hand was raised. Esther? Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I was feeling uh, maybe if we can make it twice a week, uh, one day in, during the week and on a Saturday, it's okay for me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Esther. It is noted. So I think we'll probably end our call. We don't want to keep you very long. I know it's uh, the weekend for most people. Um, some of you might be working, but um, maybe we'll just close the call for now. Um, Elizabeth, unless there's anything else, or Rita, if there's anything else you wanted to add, uh, and we can uh, keep communicating on our group, on our WhatsApp. Yeah. Erin, I don't know whether we have time for these two participants who have raised their hands. Do we have time? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. A few minutes. Okay, so you can go on. I'm not sure who has raised their hands. Mohammed Jale, Jale. Mohammed Jale and Infinix, not for Mohammed, go on. Mohammed, you're muted. Please unmute yourself. Okay. Every, you could you could do every every uh, Tuesday on 4 p.m. The way to, the way we are learning, mm. that is good because we're supposed to uh, to learn every every week one day. That is mm. better. Okay. Thank you, Mohammed. <laughs> Thank you for your suggestion. In Phoenix, not four. I'm not sure who you are, but go on.
Okay, I don't seem to to get through to Infinix. So Erin, as you were saying, as you wind up, um, I don't know whether Rita, you have something to say. Rita, are you here mm -hmm. with us? Okay, so if Rita is not here, then this conversation shall go on, but we have a tentative date for October the 8th at 2 p.m., same time. So in case we'll have a different date, we are going to share that on the WhatsApp platform. So feel free to share your suggestions. Whichever will gain majority vote is what we are going with, because at the end of the day, we want to reach out to as many of you as possible. It was a great afternoon. I was, I'm glad to be part of this group um, and I'm looking forward to a lot of learning. So Erin, you can close the floor. Thanks everyone. Um, yeah, definitely excited to, to see that you're all wanting to learn and uh, just take your time whenever you do have free time at work or at home to, to log in and, and to go through some of the sections. As you are doing that, just send us a message on the group and just inform people how you're managing and if there's interesting topics that you're learning about. Um, and we'll see you guys uh, as soon as possible. Good luck yeah. with all your work. Thank you. Bye everyone. <laughs> Bye everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye.